Welcome into Sports Memo's Betting Podcast, NFL Opening Line Report, Super Bowl Edition with Teddy Covers. Teddy, welcome in. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right, uh, Drew. Excited about this week, man. It's a pretty big week this week in Las Vegas. Uh, hopefully many of you will be out here uh, for the big game, uh, obviously on Sunday. And uh, for those of you watching, wherever it is you watch, you know, that the, in terms of betting weeks, there aren't many bigger betting weeks in the Super Bowl, you know, the week of the Super Bowl. This is Christmas for sports bettors. So uh, let's enjoy it and see if we can make some money uh, on Sunday. Yeah, in terms of any one game, it doesn't get any better than this Sunday. Uh, Teddy coming to us from Las Vegas. I usually am, but Teddy, I'm actually in South Florida, so it's a big weekend here as well. And it looks like the weather should be nice this week for Super Bowl Sunday. Um, and we'll be talking about some of the props. Might be... A good thing to keep in mind what the weather is going to be on Sunday. But, Teddy, let's start off with side and total here. We got San Francisco versus Kansas City. It looks like uh, minus one, minus, minus one is the prevailing number. There are a couple one in the hooks out there, minus one and a half for the Chiefs. 54 and a half seems to be the prevailing total as we're speaking now, Monday morning, week of the Super Bowl. Super Bowl Sunday, February 2nd. So 54 being the total, minus one mostly, minus one and a half at some shots for the Chiefs. Anything else you wanted to throw out about the uh, side or the total movement that you've seen and where you think it's going this week? Sure. Just a quick look ahead at the weather forecast as we want to do well ahead of time uh, <laughs> for Super Bowl Sunday. Uh, expected to be sunny, temperatures around 70 degrees. So it's supposed to be a beautiful day for football. It's also supposed to, also supposed to be beautiful in Vegas uh, for the Super Bowl this week. So whatever that's worth. Uh, but it is supposed to rain the night before. There's always a chance in South Florida of dealing with rains or passing showers and the like. Uh, so it's definitely worth noting there. But uh, rest assured, we'll be monitoring the weather report very closely throughout the course uh, of the week, especially, obviously, in an outdoor venue uh, this time around. When it comes to side and total, there's a couple of things to talk about here. Uh, one, in conversations with a handful of sportsbook directors around town, there is de- a developing dichotomy here where the recreational betters are looking at the higher scoring offense and the professional betters are looking at the uh, elite defense. Uh, there is a sharp square divide in this game right now. It's not every sharp bet is on this side and every square bet is on that side, but the majority of the tickets are on Kansas City. The bigger bets that have come in are coming in on San Francisco, and that's not unusual uh, to see the public being in love with a higher flying offense and the wise guys being in love uh, with the superior defense. It's certainly worth noting that the wise guys have lost plenty of Super Bowls, including last year when the sharp play was on the Rams and the public play was on the uh, Patriots. So it's not unusual or unheard of to see the public beat the wise guys on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, I can think of half a dozen times that's happened. And that's just off the top of my head. If I went back and looked, there'd be more, uh, I'm sure. But the pros versus Joe's angle on this is uh, the, the pros are looking at the San Fran uh, and the Joes are looking at Kansas City. And the books, if you look around from sports book to sports book, the books that cater to recreational players are, uh, you know, they're still sitting at one and a half. I'm even seeing twos out there uh, on KC. The books that cater to the pros are pretty much exclusively at uh, uh, KC minus one. Uh, when it comes to the total, we've reached a point, at least at the books that catered to wise guys, where it's not going up anymore. You know, I mean, this was a steady over. You know, and we're seeing all right, how high is it going to get, how high is it going to get uh, before the money starts coming in on the under. And look, we haven't seen under money come in yet. I don't think there's any r- – anyone who's looking to bet the under is in no rush to make that bet, uh, simply because one would anticipate with 90% plus of the wagers that are going to come in in the 48 hours before kickoff, the, if you're looking to bet unders, you're waiting until the 48 hours before kickoff to do it. All that said, this total has stopped rising at the books that cater to sharper betters. You know, it went steady, steady up, 51.5, 52, 52.5, 53, 53.5, 54, 54 and a half. Hit some 55s, and that's boom, 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 it stopped. We haven't seen buy, a ton of buyback, 54.5 still uh, a common number out there. And the books, again, that cater to the recreational betters that don't take the wise guy monies, they're all at 55 plus, um, or many of them are at 55 plus. But total wise, I think we've seen maybe not the peak, um, but uh, there's clear resistance at 55 or higher 
Um, and that tells me that we will see under money, despite all the public money that's coming in on the over for this game. We'll see under money from the Sharps uh, in the 48 hours before kickoffs. And the books that cater to the Sharp betters will have a lower total than the books that cater to recreational betters by kickoff. And in, in, in your opinion, because this is an interesting topic in terms of 55 seems to be the, you know, it is the high watermark in resistance there. Do you think that it could break through? You know, I'm almost thinking like stock market style where a stock will hit a, a price and then come back, hit a price again, come back, and then ultimately push through if that's the way it's going. Do you think that that could happen here with this total or no, it's going to stop at 55? Um, it's very hard. That's an excellent question. Now. Yeah. No, but I, I mean, I, let, let me, I, I mean, the, the, my gut reaction is it's not going higher than 55 at the majority of books. Okay. Now, when it comes to that, the 48 hours before kickoff, I don't know how else to describe it other than a cluster bleep for sports books. Remember, there's a screen. We all have a screen with a handful of, you know, uh, you know, you can go to the uh, sports memo live odd screen, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you'll see the side and the total. They'll have that. They do not have all 400 prop, well, plus props listed on that no. screen. Uh, okay. So what happens is books – there's literally a line out the door at every book in Vegas all weekend. Okay. And the books aren't sharing their info. They're just, how do we keep, you know, well, let's move this number. We've got to move this number. Oh, we just took a hit there. I mean, it's all, um, it's all, uh, it, how would I, it's all, uh, li you know, limiting liability. Mm -hmm. There's no broader concern about what's the market doing. It's about what's happening in our book as we're taking in bets at 17 different windows and online and hand over fist. So that means a couple of things. One is that the prop prices will vary dramatically from book to book. And those uh, price changes will be even more dramatic over the weekend. And two, when it comes to side and total, there may be some legitimate disparity on, on Super Bowl Sunday between one book and the next. Uh, even though, I mean, side and total, they're all listed on the screen. Uh, they're all listed on the sports memo. Uh, you, you, just because of the nature of how crazy it is <laughs> on Super Bowl Sunday, the books aren't always a little worried about being specifically on market. They're worried about balancing their own liability. So uh, you, you see uh, some situations on Super Bowl Sunday where there's, you know, you say at 55, is that where it maxes out? At most books, it will, but there may well be exceptions. Um, there will be exceptions uh, because that's their own, uh, you know, based on well, whatever liabilities they have at their own property is where, where they have to deal the numbers. It's not about the broader market number come this weekend. It's about each individual book's own liabilities, and, and that creates great opportunities for betters. That makes a lot of sense. Well put, Teddy. Uh, limiting their own liability risk, not necessarily worrying about market-wide numbers for the Super Bowl, especially for this game, Teddy. We're also seeing, uh, looking at the sports memo odd screen right now, South Point at 55 and one and a half. That would make me think that it's more of a, a, a square book. Is that, the, is that what South Point is normally known for, or more of a sharp book? No. Okay. Not at all. So I mean, South Point. You know, what what when I'm when I'm putting books into categories, I would absolutely put in a, the South Point is a book that caters to uh, uh, sharper betters. But again, let's not forget. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and people forget this. It's one game. Right. All right. <laughs> and you say, where's the sharp money? You know what the sharp money's doing? The sharp money's going to be all over the college basketball screen on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> um, uh, side and total. Between you know the two elite teams and a, and and a uh, you know the the once in a generation quarterback and the best defense in the NFL, you know it's not a scenario in which the professional betters I can tell you flat out you know the they're looking for props from a side standpoint. This isn't a you know there's not like every pro is loading up on San Fran. It, it's just. It's not, it, this isn't Seahawks Broncos. Okay. We're literally every pro was on Seattle and backing up the dump truck to the window and every Joe was on Denver. And that was as easy a Super Bowl as you can get. This isn't that, you know, um, those, those, those scenarios do happen once in a while. They don't happen very often. Okay. And he's Teddy Covers each and every Monday here on the Sports Memo Betting Podcast. Follow him on Twitter at Teddy underscore Covers. Myself on Twitter at Drew Martin Betts. We got $9 Monday each and every play discounted to just $9, including Teddy's total in the NBA going tonight. Tipping off 
Monday night, only nine bucks. That's sportsmemo.com. Teddy, we got um the props to talk about here. Super Bowl props. And uh, shout out to our friend Ralph Michaels. He's got a, a nice sheet up that uh, is going over pretty much a, a lot of the props here and how they cashed in the past, what, about 10 years. I'm um, just looking at it, Teddy, and I'll throw it over to you. I mean, we got the coin toss, first play. I always like the first play, especially in South Florida, Teddy. want to tell you why. I did play quarterback here in Broward County. And one thing from, from playing football in South Florida and a lot of the high school kids here will, will be able to, and coaches will be able to tell you this. If it's raining, you always want to throw the ball on the first play of the game because it's the driest ball. And, it, and your hands are the driest. The wide receiver's hands are the driest. The center's hands are the driest. So it, it, in South Florida, if there's a chance for rain, I'm going to be I, I'm gonna be on the pass just, be, just for that. But looking at the weather, it doesn't look like rain's going to be an issue. That's one here. Pass is minus 120. Rush is plus 130. A penalty, interesting enough. So this is a three-way uh, bet. A penalty is plus 160. Um, but I just wanted to throw that one out there. And one thing that I was looking at prop wise, first play, we got the coin toss, uh, Rams won last year, New England won the year before Atlanta won the year before just going down the line here team to score first wins the game. Yes. Yes. No. Three years ago. And then yes, three straight after that. But Teddy, throw it over to you and things that are kind of catching your eye with this, uh, prop report. Sure. And, and I want to talk about this rather than go through all the individual player props, um, certainly people have all kinds of bettable opinions about the player props, uh, as do I. But the more general props are the ones where I think a lot of people struggle with, and these are on every single sheet, you know, uh, and a lot of people play them. Having the history is so key. So you talk about that first play, and again, the numbers that, uh, that are posted on that sheet, they're last year's numbers, so they're not initially accurate for this year. But the pass as the first play of the game, well, that has been – Five of the last seven years, including four of the last five. And one of those was a safety on the bad snap to uh, Peyton Manning in the Seahawks Broncos oh, right. Super Bowl, which I, that was a pass play, too, wasn't it? I believe it was just so. a bad snap for a run, yeah. but I'm, I'm almost sure it was a pass play. So, really, six of the last seven years, uh, we've seen a pass in the first offensive play uh, in the Super Bowl. You talked about the team to scoring first wins the game, and that's usually priced in the minus 160 range. That's been a really good bet. Eight of the last nine times in the Super Bowl, the team that scored first ended up winning. The team is scoring last winning, and that's usually also in that minus 160 range. Well, the team that scored last has won each of the last 10 Super Bowls. The first score of the game, you know, and you can find five-minute lines, six-minute lines, and seven-minute lines for first score. You'll see a pretty big difference in the juice. <laughs> Uh, you know, a team is scoring the first five minutes. The yes is a big dog. A team is scoring the first seven minutes. The no uh, is the uh, is a dog. So uh, between five, six, and seven minutes, you'll see a dramatic disparity. That being said, last year's Super Bowl, no scoring until the second quarter. Uh, no scoring until uh, seven minutes in in that crazy 41-33 uh, Patriots-Eagles Super Bowl. So even that stayed under early. Uh, you know, if you pass the no score first six minutes or first seven minutes or first five minutes, there was no scoring at all in the first quarter uh, of the Falcons Patriots, another wild game uh, that flew over the total. No scoring there till the second. Um, no scoring in uh, Seattle, New England in the first quarter. So for the last five, we've seen that uh, prop go over. No score the first six minutes of the ball game, first seven minutes or first five minutes. Uh, the slower starts in Super Bowls have been a consistent money winners in recent years. Should I keep going? Because there's so many of these to talk about. It's really fascinating. You know, the yeah. defense are a special teams touchdown, uh, which has scored. Uh, you know, that's always a big dog. Six of the last ten Super Bowls, we've seen a non-offensive TD, although not in either of the last uh, two years. The two-point conversion attempt we've seen three times in the last four years. And we've seen that seven of the last ten. Uh, teams trying for two. Uh, the history says yes. Um, the field goals, both teams making a field goal of at least 34 yards. That's a common prop. That's five and five the last 10 years. The yes, uh, often heavily juiced uh, in that prop, but the no has been more profitable uh, in recent seasons. Game decided by exactly three points. That's one that always stands out to me, Drew. People are like, oh, yeah, I can get uh, I can get five for one with that. Not many. Yeah, well, it's happened one time in the last uh, 10 years. Uh, and even in these short line games, asking teams to win by exactly three, 
It's like betting on the will there be a six the next roll in craps, you know, you, or seven, I should say, uh, in craps, uh, where you're not getting six two one, you're getting six four one. It's a bad bet. Um, and of course, the game had not been decided by exactly three in any of the last six Super Bowls. Longest TD of the game. Um, let's see. They've been. Uh, it was only two <laughs> yards last year, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, the, 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 the longest touchdown, the shortest touchdown over under one and a half yards is worth talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's gone under five times in the last seven years with one yard touchdowns. Uh, obviously, the longest touchdown, shortest touchdown of the game in this also uh, one and a half yards. The under has been the bet to make uh, in that combined field goals, three and a half, uh, four overs, six unders. The last 10 years, nothing dramatic there. Um, highest scoring half, second half, has been real good. Uh, 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 cashing five of the last seven. Um, combined interceptions, seen over four times in the last six years. Combined lost fumbles, we've actually seen a fair few overs. Um, although each of the last two years has stayed under. And combined lost fumble. So, uh, I mean, there's a ton of these. The total quarterback sacks, five last year, one the year before, 10, 12, and four the year before that. All three of them went over. Although in years past, we've looked at three and a half for quarterback sacks. That's not the prevailing number this year, given the pass rush of these two squads. So, um, I can keep going. No, no, good, good stuff, Teddy. I have a question here. Um, I guess – over or under uh, one and a half yards for for the shortest TD, and uh, it's mostly been under. I, b- I believe you said. In in a big part of that handicap is the intercept or the um, pass interference in the end zone. The ball comes out to the one, right? Or is it? it does it come back to the Correct. two? Uh, it's, it comes out to the one yard. Line. Okay, so that would be a big part of that handicap to go under on that one. Absolutely, you're you're, you're hoping. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess I, that, that was a huge part of the prop questions there. We got, um, slower starts out the gate. So if you were going to take advantage, because these are, you know, a lot of people thinking this is, uh, going to be high scoring just with the chiefs alone, what they've been able to do and taking the over, if you were on the board of slower starts, how would you recommend attacking that? Like no score in the first five minutes? Would you be like, uh, you know, lowest scoring quarter, first quarter? What do you think's the, the smartest bet to attack a slow start? All of those make sense, and if I'm if I'm playing the the under or, or the so first quarter to be the lowest scoring quarter makes sense. First half to be the lowest scoring half makes sense if we're expecting a slow start, um, and it's also the no score first however many minutes. And I personally, if I like the under, if I like the no score in the first couple minutes, I'm going to spread my bet out. I'm going to put some under five minutes, some under six minutes, some under seven minutes. All are available. Okay. Um, so I'm going to hedge myself a little bit uh, so I can get a, a, a nice plus price on the plus seven minutes or the no score first seven minutes, even if I have to lay a price with the no score first five minutes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. No, that makes uh, a lot of sense. So if, it's, if the opening kick gets returned for a touchdown, you're screwed. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, there's a, there's a realistic chance especially if San Fran's on offense to open the game. And then whoever wins the coin toss is deferred in the Super Bowl every year. Uh, they win and defer, win and defer. Uh, I'm trying to the last time a team took the uh, opening, that won the coin toss and took the opening kick was uh, New Orleans uh, back in Super Bowl 44. That was a full 10 years ago. And, of course, uh, they took the opening kick and then went for the onside kick to open the second half. So they got the ball to open both halves there. Uh, the defer, uh, uh, normally the case. Uh, but the, the bottom line is uh, I'm going to look at uh, – th- th- there's a, r- a realistic chance that, especially if San Fran gets the ball first, you know, the 49ers game plan has to be keep the ball out of Mahomes' hands. And San Fran's been putting together these impressive, long, grind-out-the-clock, 15-play, 17-play drives. So my point being is the Niners could get the opening kick – March down, score, and you can still cash your no score first five minutes, no score first six minutes, no score first seven minutes props, uh, e- e- even if they score on their opening drive. That makes given sense. the way yeah. that yeah that that that, that they want to play uh, the no uh, and you know the, uh, a lot of times I, I look for the no punt or which will happen first punt or score uh, or how will the opening drive end up you know a punt field goal uh, touchdown. Uh, the three-way props. And the three-way props aren't, you know, I, I always, 
when I'm betting props, you, you can never forget that anytime it's a three-way prop, the house takeout is greater than in a two-way prop. So your best props are always yes, no, over, under. You know, that's that's your legitimately bargain price props. Uh, you won't find that on the three-way options, let alone the, you know, who's going to score the first touchdown uh, <laughs> of the game option, which offers the big payouts. Uh, but is not at, at any point a positive expectation wager. And Teddy, just a handicapping question overall for you: three-way props takeout is is more for the Super Bowl. Is it like that always, or just for this game? Like, are soccer um, books taking more out for their three ways? Do you, Do you know? Right. Slightly, okay. but it's also uh, there's a different type of competition when it comes to betting soccer. You see what I'm saying? More sports, uh, you know the. Well, yeah, I mean, spot, so soccer globally is the biggest is is the biggest sport uh, for betting. You know, not here in the states, obviously, but globally it is. Uh, so you'll find the competition tougher. So you'll find, you know, uh, you'll, you'll find books uh, that take out less on the three way props in soccer that they would than compared to what they're going to take out. Uh, the house takeout is going to be on uh, on the Super Bowl. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. And and do you? And I know I'm asking these questions just on the spot. We haven't gone over these. Is the Super Bowl the most bet game in the world, or would that be the championship game in the World Cup, or is there something I'm not thinking of? I don't know in terms of handle for the World Cup versus handle for the Super Bowl. Global hand. I mean, there's never been an accurate picture of global handle for uh, for U.S. sports. Right. Uh, and there still is not going to be an accurate picture of global handle for U.S. sports. So uh, that's an answer that I genuinely don't know. Right. Um, although when you think about it, you know. If everyone in the country bet on the Super Bowl, I, I still don't know there are as many bettors as would bet on the you know the World Cup. Uh, World Cup's got a really big audience. Super Bowl, but has I don't a big know if the World Cup final is the one that gets all the action, or if it's you know, or if it's the semis, or if it's the group rounds, or whatever it is. Right. Uh, I, I'm not a soccer betting expert, so I I, I really couldn't. Uh, I, I don't want to uh, to guess. It, it, I mean, the Super Bowl is a hugely bet game, Teddy, even outside. It, living in Costa Rica, I, I remember watching the Super Bowl with people that didn't understand the game of football, and they were watching the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? It was just like a big skept- spectacle. So uh, it, there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on this game, a lot of bets placed, even from people that uh, don't fully understand all the rules of American football. But, Teddy, I mean, I thought we bro- broke it down really good, man. Side total props. Um, did you want to throw anything else out there that kind of forgetting to mention here before we shut this down? Um, geez, I don't know, man. <laughs> I mean, there's, you know, the Super Bowl week, your 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 head's filled with stuff. I'll tell you that. Uh, my mind is whirling, and and I've, you know, so my prop report. Yeah, let's talk about my. I mean, I, I haven't posted side total prop anything yet. Okay. Uh, it will be up tomorrow. I, I my goal is to have them posted today. Um, I'll uh, have it written up today. I, you know, I got a whole bunch of bets and a whole bunch of tickets, and I got to put it together and find out which numbers are still available uh, that we can give to the clients. But that report will be. Let's let's be realistic. That report will be posted before 9 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday morning at Sports Memo and Wager Talk uh, dot com. Uh, my goal is to have it up tonight, but I don't want to guarantee I'll have it up tonight. But you can check tonight, obviously. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll have uh, and I've. And I said side total and props. I'm not going to get involved with this total. So it's going to be – I'll have a side recommendation uh, for the game, and then we'll have our prop report. Um, and I don't know yet exactly how many props it's going to be. Historically, I've been in the range of anywhere between uh, 6 and 12, uh, and I would anticipate we'll be in that range uh, for prop recommendations for the clients uh, this year as well. Okay, and we'll have that out tomorrow. And, guys, you can also use the coupon code TEDDY69. That's T E. DDY69 at checkout for a seven day all access package for just 69 bucks. It will include every play he releases in every sport for the next seven days for less than 10 bucks a day. Teddy69 at checkout, and that will incru- include his Super Bowl play and the prop package. So, a great deal there with that podcast coupon code Teddy69 at checkout. It's also $9 Monday sportsmemo.com so make sure to check that out we'll have teddy on uh next monday as well going over the super bowl also a look ahead to maybe uh college basketball or nba but uh teddy all good otherwise yeah man and this and that next monday we'll absolutely look at the nba uh, nfl future market okay uh yeah yeah for 2021 we got to know who's uh if there's anyone we need to bet now um so good stuff uh drew uh thanks uh, for watching, guys. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to hang out with Drew and I. We really appreciate it. And again, please visit the website uh, when you can, sportsmemo.com. We appreciate all the likes. We really appreciate all the retweets. We really appreciate all the comments. 
uh, keep them coming. And thank you very much. Yeah, feel free to thank comment. You. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very <laughs> much. Feel free to comment on the video, guys. We love that. And uh, on Twitter, at Teddy underscore covers, at Drew Martin Betts, podcast coupon code Teddy69 at checkout, seven-day all-access. Guys, uh, best of luck with your bets. We'll talk tomorrow.